Welcome back to Extra Shot, and we are live from the DSP Leaders World Forum in Windsor. I'm Charlotte Kahn. I'm delighted to welcome you back for more discussions around the sessions happening, happening here today. Um, so we're together for about 10 minutes before we break away for lunch for about an hour. So let's keep it quite general to start with. I am delighted to welcome Robert Prince. Robert is Director, Network and Telecommunications Group at Intel Corporation. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Great to be here. We've got Daphna Yane, who's Head of Marketing at AWS. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. And we have Francis Hayson, Principal Analyst at Apple Door Research. Thank you Great for coming. Great to be here. Thank you. So, the second session of the forum was dedicated to what's constantly, constantly hitting the headlines um, for good and bad reasons, actually generating an equal amount of fear and excitement. It's AI, of course. So, can I ask you about the, t the key takeaways uh, of the session, according to you? Yeah, I think, first of all, it was a fantastic session. The, the, the discussions were, were really interesting. Um, I think for me, having been here last year, there clearly, you know, it's quite a lot of progress, I think, in terms of the clarity, at least as it relates to the what um, relating to AI, right? Uh, I think the couple of open questions for me was, you know, what about the how, right? You know, we're moving from the, we understand the, the areas in which we can focus AI, but, but specifically, how do we actually go and action that uh, into the, into the organizations? And I think for me, you know, the, the whole people process piece was also a fairly significant uh, topic that, that really came out very, very strongly, you know, where many of us, of course, are technology led or technology companies, but, but some of the key issues that, that obviously we face as an industry is, is really that, that culture, the ability to kind of think differently uh, and approach these kind of challenges and opportunities really through a kind of ground zero lens versus looking through a, a legacy lens, if you will, right? So, so I think for me, obviously, the, the particular use cases that were called out, maybe I'm sure we'll talk about some of those, were, were interesting, um, but it's that people aspect, it's the ability for the industry to actually galvanize you know, its capabilities in a way that turns it from a, hey, we understand what we need to do to how do we actually go and make that happen. So a few very interesting points from you here, Robert. First of all, you mentioned the fact that last year it was all about use cases, the potential of AI, and now we're thinking about how we're going to deliver all the uh, benefits of AI. Um, Daphna, do you want to follow up on this actually? What really resonated with you during this uh, previous session on AI? Yeah, absolutely. So I, would, I actually wanted to say the same because I think what I was really picking up from the session was the fact that like, it's very, very clear that AI is here to stay, right? Generative AI. And after like one year of POCs and different experimentation and, and, and checking you know, the technology and using many, many things, now everyone realized that it's about you know how to move this stuff to production, right? And it's not anymore just about the shiny use cases and the chatbots. It's really more about how we set up the right data foundation, how we reskill the people, how we take care of security and governance topics. Cost is a very big part of it. So, so it's really about how we take things to the next level. We talked a lot about maturity, right? On day, you know, we are on day one in AWS. We use a lot of day one, but how we are evolving, you know, how we are uh, building the right foundation, how we're tackling people, processes, and the technology, but definitely it's not just about the technologies, and how we are getting better and trying to see what are the right use cases that really drive the right value for the organization. So definitely, I really enjoyed the panel, really enjoyed the discussion, really enjoyed your question, <laughs> and, and, and it's spot on about, you know, moving things from experimentation to, to production. That's right, Francis, you were very engaged during the session and you asked this big question around the, uh, the value of, of human input and decision making in particular. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the, the panel. I, I, my, my observation from it was that, that we've clearly come off of what I would term as the hype, where it was slightly off the hype cycle. Um, we discovered the easy use cases that work. We've also discovered the sort of horrors, the hallucinations that the Gen AI can, can, can deliver. It's good and it's bad. Um, so I, I think we're now at that sort of realism stage. Um, I'm very conscious. Of, we've just done some research um, uh, which we describe as kind of the autonomy chasm. And there's a fundamental change in thinking that needs to happen between what we term mechanization of what you do at the moment versus how do you fully auto 
autonomize, automate a, 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 ne a network. Um, and I think the reason for my question was that quite often I think we, we put tools like AI in a kind of it has to be perfect um, bucket rather than comparing it with with the reality of, of how we actually run networks, where quite often we can make crazy decisions in the network, but they that they appear to have no no well they do have they, they have big consequences, but they do not have a big consequence in terms of the way we rethink the whole the whole process. So, for me, the I think what we're seeing is kind of a still a, a degree of. Uh, uh, in, in the panel was a lot of a lot of discussion about really still mechanizing what we do at the moment. Um, I was really pleased to see the uh, gentleman from Deutsche Telekom, who was sort of saying that there are three phases. My only worry in that one is that if we only get to phase one, I think we will only see the limited opportunities from AI, and we really need to be thinking about that. How could we do this completely differently at the, at, at the same time? But it was a great, it was a great panel, um, and uh, a, a, I think a degree more realism in this this panel than than last year's. <laughs> realism, but we're talking about hallucinations, nightmares, horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound that, that good. Um, we're going to take a break, so you're going to be back with us after the lunch break to explore how AI can help automate networks. Obviously, that was the uh, the, the crux of our uh, conversations here earlier today. Um, so do stay tuned, stay with us, okay? And uh, hear more from Robert Prince at Intel, Francis Hasem at Apple Door Research, and Dafta Yane at AWS. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Extra Shot. I'm Charlotte Kahn. We're live from Windsor at the DSP Leaders World Forum, where I'm delighted to be with Robert Prince. Robert is Director, Network and Telecommunications Group at Intel Corporation. Thanks for joining us again, Robert. My pleasure. Uh, great to be here. So before the lunch break, we started to talk about all the benefits of AI and the fact that we've entered a second phase, I'm tempted to say. Initially, we're talking about the potential benefits, of course, the power of AI. And now we're talking about how to harness the power of AI and how to go about delivering all its benefits. So let's go back to, a little, to it a little bit. What's the best way to implement AI? Um, explore or plan? I think explore is important. And I think, you know, reflecting on the panel earlier on that that was a key part of the discussion clearly there are parts you know where you have to you know test it make sure it works to deploy in critical areas but i think one of the areas that, that came out quite strongly at least for me was the the need for experimentation right uh the 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 opportunity to work probably much much more closely with the with the value chain the ecosystem which is obviously continuing to develop so that you know organizations you know collectively we can build our skill sets and capabilities so that we can move much much faster uh, in this particular space clearly you know it, it's got um, massive implications across a number of different areas um, and I think part of the challenge for the industry is we don't know what we don't know so that experimentation is going to be super important We've been talking about network automation for years, and of course now um, things have changed since Gen AI, of course. Um, how is that a game changer? And how much is AI going to be a big accelerator when it comes to network automation? Yeah, I think again, it was mentioned on the panel, wasn't it? The hype, of course, this year after you know the Gen AI announcements, we see it in the press. Um, but at the same time, I think more clarity coming out of the panel in terms of where, where to focus. I think that the, um, I, th I think the other piece that came out for me as well was that there are, that there's, a, there's a difference in companies that have a tops down approach um, to AI, you know, where you have the CEOs, you know, basically promoting that as, as their lead cheerleader, if, if you will. And I think that's important because, you know, the board, the CEO, all the way down the organization needs to be driving the agenda because it is a paradigm shift. Of course, there's a lot of hype, but at the same time, there's a real requirement, not just as it relates to the technology, which of course is super important, um, but the, you know, the, the whole 
uh, process changes required, the new skill sets required to, to actually go and make it happen in the market. And the other piece, of course, is that it needs to be outcome based. So what problems are we trying to solve in the industry? What's the financial business case behind it? There's a whole bunch of things behind the technology, if you will, that I think you know we've got a long way to go. It's early days, um, but uh, the potential, of course, is, is, is enormous. So you've mentioned this top-down approach. It's a tough one, isn't it, for CEOs out there? Because often the benefits from their perspective um, are to do with efficiency, not necessarily creating new services per se. Um, so tell me more about um, your take on this. And, and it's also a hard one to sell to the workforce, isn't it? Um, given that many people fear that AI will replace them. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important that it is a tops down, where you have almost like thematic goals where the organization can rally around you know, a, a common set of, of goals. So you break down some of the silos that often can inhibit an organization to transform. Uh, and I think in that transformation, companies will look very different in the future compared to potentially what they look like today. And I think you know, bringing workforces along that journey uh, and also developing the skill sets so that new opportunities develop for the business, but equally for, for hopefully all of us that work in these companies as well, uh, is going to be important. And, and that, again, I think is why um, you see organizations, and it was mentioned on the panel where you have, you know, very collaborative leadership teams that are, you know, um, very cohesive in their approach versus pushing some of these key transformation areas down the organization, uh, which obviously makes it extremely hard uh, to turn into reality. You've just used a key word here, haven't you? Collaboration. It's important to implement AI within the enterprise space to have this ecosystem of various stakeholders. So how do you go about enhancing that collaboration? I th again, a on the panel, one of the topics that, that was discussed was to what extent do the, um, uh, the DSPs work together on a common um, area where the industry wants to move forward and, that, and, and, and you collaborate in those, those areas, of course. Um, and of course, there are other areas where you would want to differentiate. And I think that was an open question, at least the one that I, I took away from that. And, and that's going to be quite interesting, I think, in terms of how that develops over time. The other, the other kind of vector is working very closely with the, uh, with, with, with the ecosystem and the, and the, and the partnerships, uh, and, and they will be evolving. And, and part of that is, how do I get closer to my customer? So, of course, Enterprise was called out, wasn't it, as one of the key uh, you know, business opportunities. And there are many different verticals out there that we potentially could address. So which ones do you start with? What keeps those businesses up at night? How do we align around those industry KPIs uh, in the first instance so that we can then bring you know, solutions and propositions to the market that, 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 that helps our customers? So, so I think the collaboration piece is essential. It's a team sport. Nobody's going to be able to do it on their own. Um, and um, yeah, uh, that's again why these, these, these forums and, and this particular event is, is very helpful. So during the uh, second session of the uh, forum on AI, Guy and Ray shared the results of the survey conducted within the audience. And it was all about um, probing the audience to find out when they expect AI to enable telcos to be truly um, touch zero from a human perspective. Uh, very mixed results there, but they don't expect any benefits until after 2030. Some expect none at all. <laughs> so how did you vote? <laughs> well, I, I voted uh, after 2030, right? Because again, it's a very broad question, isn't it? Right? So, so I always believe that there's going to be new um, uh, new opportunities, of course, where hopefully you know we're going to be, uh, uh, you know, as employees engaged in that. Um, but clearly, the, the opportunity on, on automating the network is enormous, uh, and it's going to be very, very, very quickly. I think the other thing is, that, that struck me as part of the, the survey is that the number one practical uh, application that, that many spoke about was around the energy reduction, uh, the sustainability aspects, and I think there's a lot of work. Uh, that's been going on and we're engaged a lot in that space as well around the core network and the radio access network and other areas as too in terms of simplifying uh, those infrastructures you know virtualizing them and, and, and making our customer lives easier so that they have the uh, flexibility to, to build these new capabilities you know move, moving forward so I, I voted after 2030 I guess we'll wait and see. 
Um, one last question, maybe, Robert, is to do with uh, the concerns around uh, an ethical, responsible development of AI and notably concerns around security. Um, how can we ensure that we don't do this trade-off between security and innovation when we automate networks? Yeah, I mean, security is non-negotiable. And I think, again, that was discussed, wasn't it, on the panel as it relates to making sure we've got strong governance uh, and regulation coming in, whilst at the same time making sure that, you know, there's always a balance in terms of moving quickly, uh, whilst also not being encumbered by uh, those things. But, but clearly, you know, we're, we're dealing with, um, you know, uh, data, customer data, and uh, security has to, of course, be paramount around that. So you've been here at the uh, DSP World Leaders um, Forum before. It's your second time, I believe. Is there, I mean, other than AI, the session we've just obviously uh, uh, attended before, before the lunch break, any other sessions you're interested in? Yeah, I mean, the first session was very good as well, right, around the digital services. I thought that was fascinating. Um, you know, that, that, that was a good debate um, and uh, quite a few different perspectives that, that, we, that we got from, from that. Um, looking forward to the customer first um, kind of approach. I think that's going to be more tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, where we you know, can discuss, you know, again, what keeps our customers up at night? How do we become much more customer centric as an industry? Uh, and how do we acquire the skill sets to enable us to ask the right questions and, and hopefully respond to that? So yeah, looking forward to that. Fantastic. Robert, thank you very much for your insights. My pleasure. Today, thank, thank you. Thank you, thanks for having me. Stay tuned, we're back for more in around an hour's time.